Good morning, and welcome to another Bible study here at Herkin Baptist Church as we're getting into this new year, and uh, we'll be doing some more of our little topical Bible studies every morning here for Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday for about 10 minutes each time. And today we're going to look at uh, accountability. I picked this one to kind of start off the, the new year here. And it says, uh, we're looking over in Matthew chapter 12 and in verse 36 and 37. But he says, But I, I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words shall thou be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Okay, we, we talk about accountability, and the word idle there has the idea of being saying one thing and meaning something else. It's kind of a uh, hypocrisy, if you would. But uh, when we think about accountability and we think about this day and time that we live in, uh, there's not a lot of accountability. Uh, people are just in the, in the secular society and uh, just with our laws. Uh, people break the laws and, and they're not held accountable for it. People break their word. We know that uh, in politics and that's kind of expected. Uh, they say one thing but they're going to do something else. And So we see there's, there's really no accountability but the, uh, God doesn't deal that way. And he's telling us right here, he said that there's a day coming that every idle word, when you're saying one thing, you're deceiving people, basically. And he said that's going to be given account for that. Why, why did you do it? And what excuses can you use for those kind of things? Uh, again, when we understand the Christian, we know that there's a day of accountability for the Christian. We're going to stand before the beam of seat of Christ. And, and our works from the day that we got saved until the time of our, our death or the rapture, uh, all those works will be judged. And uh, this kind of falls into that category. It's, it's not a, it's not our sins aren't judged. We understand that, but because the sins are covered by the blood, they're forgiven. But for you and I, it says here that uh, you, you need to be to pay attention to what you say. You know, uh, I think sometimes we as Christians get the idea that, well, you know, that day's out there. You know, I'll, I'll make things right between times. I'll ask for forgiveness and all those things. But, but it doesn't change what we've done. All right, when we talk about it as a Christian, it's not so much the sin, it's the, the lack of doing what we should do. And so when we consider uh, this portion of Scripture, when it talks about the idle words, it'll say saying one thing and meaning something else. He said, there's a day that you're going to be standing before me, and you're going to be judged according to what you said at that time. And uh, we want to be aware of that. We, we sometimes push things off. We think, well, it's, it's kind of like over in Second Peter, well, where is he coming? You know, it's been so long, thousands of years we've heard and heard and heard, and, and uh, nothing's changed. And, but the day is going to be coming. So I want to go from here. I want to run over to, uh, to Matthew, excuse me, chapter 18. So let's go to Matthew chapter 18. And uh, still in Matthew chapter 18, and we're going to be looking at uh, verses over there, starting with verse number 21, and looking down maybe to 25 along in there. It says, that, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him until seven times? And, and Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king which take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed ought him, ought him a ten thousand talents. But for so much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children, and all he had be made, had and payment be made. And so we see there, here we see this, this uh, servant run up this big debt against his, uh, his Lord there. And the, the day of accountability come, and so the idea is here that he's being held accountable for what he owes. You know, we we live in a society today where people borrow, 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 going debt, 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 and we end up they file bankruptcy and do everything else. Well, in 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 God's kingdom, there's not that opportunity. We can have forgiveness, and if we was to read more about this, we could see about the unforgiving servant. But the point that we're looking at here today is there there comes a time when you're held accountable for what you've said and what you've done for this life as a Christian. And so uh, just thinking, well, you know, I'm getting by with something and, and God's going to overlook it that, it doesn't work that way. And so we see that that day of accountability is going to come and so we need to be ready for it. Uh, again, I guess it kind of reflects in my mind back to society the way we see it today. There, People do so many crazy things and, that, and they're not held accountable. They, they misuse, abuse and do everything to other people. and. And it seems like the, the guilty are coddled and, and protected and the, the innocent are the ones that pay the price. But there is, there's a day of accountability for all these things. We know even in, uh, 
in this world we live in, those people that think they're getting by with stuff today, there's a day coming and they won't be getting by with that. So we want to understand that they need to be accountable again. And we saw right here how the, the, the debt of mounted and mounted and mounted and finally it got to the point where the, the Lord said, hey, it's time to pay up. And so we want to be ready for that day we have to stand before the demon seat of Christ and uh, we are held accountable for the life that we've lived as a Christian. I'm going over now to, to Luke chapter 12. Let's go to Luke chapter 12 and see what Luke has to say here this morning as we continue our look at accountability. In okay, Luke chapter 12 and let's go over here about verse number 20. And uh, let's back up to verse, uh, uh, we talk, here we're talking about the rich fool, okay? And he said, uh, he, we know that he accumulated a lot, of, a lot of wealth, a lot of things happened here. And he says, uh, and verse 18 says, and uh, he says, you know, verse 17, and he thought within himself saying, what shall I do? Because I have no room to where to bestow my fruits. I've got all this wealth. I've got everything accumulated. i got no place to put it. He said, I know what I'll do. And I will say to my soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. And that, a lot of people look at things that way. They say, you know what, this, uh, everything's right. I don't have to worry about anything. Just kick back and enjoy life. We hear that sound, that all the time. Eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you may die. Well, there's a lot of truth to that. Uh, the eat, drink, and be merry is what we're talking about right here. But the day of accountability is going to come in verse 20. But God said unto him, and thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? You feel so good about all you've accumulated in the world? I said, what are you doing with what you've accumulated in the world? And that's kind of what we reflect back on here. We, uh, as people want to get and get and get and gain, but the day comes that you're held accountable for all you got. You know, and God blesses some people more than others when it comes to financial, when it comes to talents and skills and that. Some are blessed more. As, and as Christians, we have more blessings than that. But God gives you the blessing. He gives you the, the wealth. He gives you the health. He gives you the talents. But it's not for your own use. He gives you those things to be used for the kingdom. And again, then we see the day of accountability. And as we see this, the rich farmer here, if you would, he's, he's accumulated all this wealth. But what's he going to do with it now? He said, well, I'm just going to sit back and I'm going to put, build a bigger barn so I can have more with me. And then I don't have to work. I'll just kick back and enjoy life. And then God says, but you know what? There's a day coming when you're going to breathe your last breath. There's a day coming when you're going to leave this world and all this stuff that you've accumulated, all these things that were so important to you are going to be left behind and somebody else is going to have it. And uh, I just, my wife and I was talking about it the other day, uh, all the things that we've accumulated, you know, there's things that seem important to us and, and uh, you know, little trinkets and things that people give you that, and uh, Christmas decorations as we're looking at those things. And I said, you know what's going to happen? Someday when we're gone and uh, those that are our children and grandchildren are going to look at those things and they're going to sweep them all into the garbage can because they don't mean anything to them. They have no value to them. So, and that's what happens. When this life is over, those things that we've accumulated uh, that were so important to us maybe aren't so important to others. And so they get thrown away because there's no need for them. But what we do with those things while we're on earth makes a big difference. So when we look at life and see what's going on, we're going to be held accountable. And that's what he says here. So in verse 21, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So we see the idea then what our responsibility is, how we're to take care of doing those things that we need to do for that day of accountability. And uh, I think sometimes when I think about that, it's going to be maybe an embarrassing day. We stand before the Lord and He says, well, I, I gave you this wealth or I gave you this health or I gave you this talent. And what did you do with that to glorify me? And so when we talk about accountability, are you really being with a mind to that? That you know that you can give a good reason to excuse that? So, so we're just going to we'll pick up again tomorrow on this and we'll see what we can come up with a little bit more on accountability. Okay, but first of all, if you're going to be standing before the beam of seat of Christ, you're going to be a Christian, right? You're going to die in Christ. So what must I do to be a Christian? Okay, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, let this be the day. Let this be the hour that you repent. That means that you turn. You turn from the world. You turn from the old life. You turn to God. Put your faith and trust in the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's payment for your sin. Let's pray. Lord, we do thank you for this day and for this time. We pray you be with each one of us as we walk this pathway of life. We pray that we be, would be found faithful to serve you in a way that when the day comes to be that we're held accountable when we stand before the beam of seat, that we'll not be ashamed, not be embarrassed, but we'll, we can feel that we've done the best that we could for you while we're on this earth. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you're going to do for us in Jesus' name. Amen.